everyone, I'm Lori Ellison from Hudson Valley Bookkeeping. Today, I'm going to teach you how to set up QuickBooks Online for a medical practice. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start a medical practice QuickBooks Online file. I'm at the QuickBooks page, and I will show you how to do this from scratch. I would say essentials is fine in the beginning, and I would wait to set up payroll. Even if you want to do it, wait till your file set up. Okay, so I created an email just for this video. is our Hudson Valley bookkeeping phone number. Okay, so I entered my information. We're not importing a QuickBooks desktop. This one, because I, I deal with a lot of mental health practices, so we'll see what this does. You'll need to know which type of entity you are. It doesn't totally matter, but you should know. If you, don't, if you can't answer this question, call your CPA or look at your paperwork. Well, let's say you're the owner. An owner should set this up and an owner should own this. Never have your bookkeeper or someone who works for you set this up. Um, make sure your email is associated as the main email or you could have a problem later. I don't really know why you can't skip this one, so we'll just pick one. Okay guys, um, we're about to set up this medical practice QuickBooks Online file. One of the things I would do first is go down to advanced. Okay, you want to turn on account numbers. The reason you want account numbers is um, it's hard to read a PL alphabetically. Okay, I finished deleting everything I could delete. Maybe there's one more. There's some it won't let you. See? Okay, so everything is, is reduced as I can. Now, I already have an Excel spreadsheet with um, our chat, chart of accounts set up. So you wanna kind of talk to your accountant or um, I have some videos on chart of accounts. Oh, shoot. Why it's doing that now. Um, but in like my chart of account videos before, your assets, like your cash is usually always in the ones. Your liabilities are in the twos. 
equity is in the threes, income is in the four, cost of goods are in the fives, and expenses are in the sixes. And I will figure out a way so that you could download and use this one as a starting off point. Okay. Here we go. So go over here. This is just saves you a lot of time, especially if you get the template from my download or anywhere else, or if your accountant gives you one, it just saves you from having to hand write all of these. And it's better to think of what you're doing ahead of time. instead of just doing things on the fly. Okay, mine already matched, but you might have to change, like your headings would have been there. I had my columns to work this out, so that's why they're already working. But my columns did already say detail type, account name, account number, and type. Okay, so this is coming straight in from my Excel spreadsheet. The only thing I'm a little nervous about are things that are sub accounts, but it looks like this looks fine because this legal and professional, then we have ones that are subs of other ones. But we might have to go and kind of fix this in a little bit. But still, look at all this savings if you have this already. And like I said, I will give you the spreadsheet. Okay, so this came in and this looks great. Oh, this is fantastic. So normally you would have had to go in to each one of these and made it a sub account. Well, actually maybe we still do. It should be, this should be, well, it's saying it's a sub. Yeah, it looks fine. Okay, so there you go. That is done. Next step, you should connect your bank account, which I can't do because this is a demo file, but we go here, transactions, banking, and you can upload, but I would really recommend just connecting it. So hopefully you're at a big bank. Um, it's much smaller, like I, I use QuickBooks Online, I'm at a credit union and it does not work well. Chase is one of the easiest banks to work with. Anyway, you would just pick your bank Click continue. And then here you're going to fill in your username and your password. It's going to ask you um, where do you, how far do you want to import or bring transactions in? And I would just you know, look back to when you're starting. If you're trying to do this from starting in January, go as far back as the bank will allow you. And then usually you can do an Excel import if you can't get it through the bank feeds. So that's one of your steps. Okay, guys, I'm just over at a demo file, just so you could see once you got um, connected, it's going to say this. Um, review and add transactions, check out tools, get off to a great start. I would definitely watch these. I mean, I have plenty of bank feed videos because these can really get you in a lot of trouble. But you would just go about doing this for each one of your accounts. Um, make sure you set these up first. So that means, you know, before you go to connect them, make sure you set them up in your chart of accounts. So like we have a checking here already. 
So that's the one you would connect to the bank feed and then you would have your credit card. So that's why we start the credit, um, the chart of accounts piece first and then do the others. Let's go back to this other test drive. So I'll just show you two, just so you um, kind of have an idea how you work this. The most important part is you're gonna have to enter um, an opening balance you know, on your checking account probably as of December. But let's say, hopefully you don't have checks outstanding. So when also when you connect your bank, it's gonna it's gonna do an opening balance posting for whatever your balance is the day you connect it. So make sure you go and delete that. So let's just say on 1231.20, you had an easy 10,000. You're really gonna have to have um, your accountant help you or a bookkeeper um, I don't know why I didn't have an equity um, we're just going to say member loan for now like you gave the company 10,000 and you're just starting let's pretend it's that okay so you would have a beginning balance and then you would start adding your transactions from your bank feed this is adding bank fee transactions is just a way to save time. It's not actual like complete bookkeeping. Okay. So as you do these, you're going to have to enter vendor names, like for instance, this one. We don't have any payees. So I wouldn't, I would just, I would do payees as they come up. And see, I typed it in, I click add. Then you have to make the vendor, fine. Then you've got to go, that's where you would have your chart of accounts printed out. But this is, um, we're in the other account. So we would use, and, and guys, watch my videos on bank feeds because you always want to copy your bank detail to memo. Really important. Take those off. So watch a bunch of videos before you start doing this, just to get comfortable. Don't just start doing this. And then you keep adding, I say, especially when you're learning, just do one at a time. Watch that bank detail goes there. Just do one at a time, take it slow. Okay, so, so far, You have gone to QuickBooks Online. You subscribed to the subscription of QuickBooks Online. You went and you changed this to patients, right? So QuickBooks, look here. Once again, I would set up the patients it would be the insurance companies or a copay. I wouldn't do invoicing through here. You should be using your external medical billing software. Um, and you imported your chart of accounts and you linked your bank accounts. So from there, you can start posting your transactions either by hand or through the banking. I hope this helped you figure out how to set up your QuickBooks online. Um, and learn a couple other things. Let me just show you one other thing. If you're not using the bank feed, I'll show you how to make a deposit. So let's say on, this is how you would manually enter it. Okay, so those are how that is how you would manually enter things if you're not using the bank feed. And again, if you were to use the bank feed, you'd be connected 
it makes me very, I don't match things. You can watch some of mine again here in the bank feed. You would, I'm not gonna come up with a code, but you would do it this way and you would click add. So either way, when you're done and you're finished, you will need to do a bank reconciliation. I have some videos on that, so check those out. And the biggest thing is to really get this chart of accounts in. Please use numbers. It will make your life so much easier when you're trying to make sense of how the business is doing. You don't want an alphabetical um, profit and loss. All right, have a great day.